All right, so I'm gonna talk about my birth story and um, I just wanna preface by saying that I love my baby. He's amazing and um, he's just the best and I'm not saying that I regret anything. I just want to share what I went through and kind of the struggles and talk about sort of the difficulty of motherhood and all that stuff. So let's start with my pregnancy. So we were trying to get pregnant. Um, well, we definitely were not trying to get pregnant. Um, I was so, I was very ready. I was so excited when I saw the pregnancy test and it was positive. I was, I was very surprised. Um, I was like jumping up and down and it was like pretty faint because I was only eight, eight days post ovulation, eight DPO. But I think that I ovulated early, which is why it showed up quite early in the pregnancy test. Um, and I told my husband and he didn't think it was real because it was such a faint line, like you could barely see it, but I knew that it was, that I was pregnant, like I knew. The next day I went to the doctor. Um, I had scheduled like a, a woman's exam that I do every year and it just happened to fall on the day after. And I was like, can I get a pregnancy test? Can I get like a blood test? They were like, yes, we can do that. I was like, okay, cool. So this would definitely confirm if I was or wasn't pregnant. I got the results like a few hours later and, I, and it said I was pregnant and I told my husband and we were so excited and yeah, it was a good day. Um, and I actually had a pretty easy first trimester. I think I threw up twice, maybe three times, but that's not bad. Like some women throw up every single day, so. Yeah, um, I, I I threw up once because I took Tylenol and I think that for whatever reason, baby or me or something with pregnancy just didn't want Tylenol. I had a headache, but I threw it up and I was like, okay, I can't take Tylenol anymore. Whatever, I'll just deal with the headaches, um, which weren't that bad. Um, so I'm reading the blog post that I wrote, which goes into way more detail than this video. It's on my Substack, which I can link below if you want to read it. Um, so this is a hard part of my preg pregnancy. This was still first trimester. Um, I got out of the shower and I was, and I like wiped myself and I was bleeding and I thought that I like miscarried because, um, I didn't know, I thought, I was like, I shouldn't be bleeding. And so we tried to schedule an appointment that day. We got in at like an afternoon appointment, luckily. They just like squeezed me in. We got the ultrasound, everything was fine with the baby. And I just had some hemorrhage bleeding, which she, the ultrasound tech said it, it happens in about 20% of pregnancies. So yeah, um, that was lucky and that was, Kind of a stressful time um then the second trimester rolls around it's like thanksgiving christmas time new year's and um this is when i had to start wearing maternity clothes because i was actually quite big i was like i don't know i kind of i looked like i was in like the third trimester in my second trimester um, the baby, he was measuring pretty big. So the first trimester, I didn't know the gender. I found out the gender at the 20 week um, anatomy scan. And we were actually wanting to wait until birth, but um, the ultrasound tech during the anatomy scan, it's kind of confusing, but she like, she was doing like the, um, 
the genital area and she was like okay close your eyes don't look because you might see something and then you'll th you'll know the gender like okay so i close my eyes she does like that part of the scan and then i thought she was done because she said like okay or something so i open my eyes and then on the screen it said it's a boy because she was gonna print she was gonna print the gender and put it in an envelope and i saw it and I like immediately closed my eyes. I didn't want her to know that I saw it um, because I don't know. I just like, I was like, hug. I, I shouldn't have looked before she said like she was done and it was my fault. And, and my husband thought it was a boy because he was like, I'm pretty sure I saw a penis like during my 16 week or something. So he was like pretty sure it was a boy it was a boy and we found out and then we told our whole family like during Christmas time and that was kind of fun um I was really really curious so I didn't I didn't mind but I think like the, the next time if we do it I would definitely definitely wait um I'd probably get less ultras ultrasounds too because I did I did it like every month you don't need to do it every month um let's see so january rolls around i um got a new insurance plan and i decided to switch doctors because there was a doctor closer to my house um and i just wanted to be closer um and and then the doctor's office was like located in the hospital that i was going to give birth so that's where i wanted to go she ended up being worse than my first doctor she was incredibly busy like i would wait an hour and a half per appointment and it would just be really stressful because like i had things to do like i, I didn't want to be going in at 2 2 p.m not seeing the doctor till 3 30 and then it would be like a five minute session where she would just like check the heartbeat and then I would like ask her one question and then it would be over. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of stupid. Um, anyway, that was really stressful for me because I just kept kind of regretting my decision of switching, like especially in the middle of my pregnancy. Um, but I just decided to stay. I was like looking into other doctors and I was like, it's gonna be even more stressful if I switch again in like the third trimester. So I just stayed, I was like, whatever. Um, uh, so the third trimester rolls around, I'm pretty big at this point. Um, I had like back pain, I had like pelvic floor pressure, swollen feet, I have insomnia, I'm like hot, hot all the time at night. I have acid reflux, which was really bad. Um, so, yeah. Um, third trimester wasn't fun. I was struggling. I was crying at like 39 or 38 and a half weeks. I was like, I don't want to be pregnant anymore. I can't do this. Anyway, that was rough. Um, I just thought that since he was so big that I was going to give birth like earlier, like the mom to give birth at like 38 weeks. For 39 weeks um didn't happen i was still pregnant and i was getting sick of it and um uh i decided to get induced because i was worried just about the size that he was getting and um i had family from out of town who wanted to be there at the birth my mom so I was like, okay, I can get induced. I can schedule it. She'll know when to come and I'll get, I won't have to give birth to like a 10 pound baby, um, which was my worry. But I think that's sort of stupid now that I think about it because I don't know. I, I don't think he would have gotten that big. I think I would have given birth probably at like 40 weeks. Um, anyway. Uh, so we get to the hospital at 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, May 1st, and, 
um, she gives me this medicine, I forget the name, but it goes like up the vagina and she like shoved it up there and, um, and that was painful. That was painful. <laughs> I talk more about it in my vlog, but yeah. Um, she puts like the monitors on me. There was like the heartbeat monitor and then like the contraction monitor. And they were attached to like the wall. So it wasn't wireless. So anytime I had to go to the bathroom, which was a lot because I was pregnant, <laughs> I had to unplug it from the wall and the IV thing that was in my arm and bring that, carry everything, all the wires and stuff to the bathroom and then like move it around, go to the bathroom. I was going to the bathroom like every hour. So this was kind of a pain. And then um, walk back, plug it back in and then get back in the bed. But nonetheless, I um, tried to go to sleep. It was probably like midnight at this point. Um, and then there was like a lot of adrenaline, so I was like kind of excited. But um, yeah, I wasn't feeling any contractions really yet. But she said that eventually, like in the morning, you'll definitely feel them. I think she gave she gave me another dose of it. Yeah, she gave me another dose, like I think three or four hours after that. So I woke up at like, she woke me up at like one or two. And then she woke me up at like three, four, five, six, seven. I didn't get any sleep. Um, she kept waking me up to like readjust the monitors on my belly because when I would like sleep a little bit, I would move. Um, but I, I could have just told her that I didn't want that I didn't really, you don't really need continuous monitoring unless there's like something wrong. And there was nothing wrong. Like, I don't know. That was really frustrating because I really, 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 really needed that sleep and I didn't get any. The next morning I didn't really sleep. Um, I was, they gave me Pitocin at like 7 a.m. That's when the contractions really kicked in and it was very, very painful. And I, um, I was like crying through them and I asked for the epidural and they gave it to me probably like 30 minutes later. Um, the epidural was fine. It was kind of hard to like stay still during a contraction, but I got through it and, um, let's see. Um, what happened after that? Oh yeah. So after the epidural, it was nice because I could just rest and I couldn't really feel any of the contraction. So they like told me to take a nap. I think I like rested for two hours, but I didn't sleep. I like couldn't fall asleep. I was just like too, too, there was just too much going on. There was like the computer and monitor. It was like right outside. This was like, this was like eight or 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or something. And I just watched a show. I think I was like watching Parks and Rec or something or New Girl, one of those shows. And um, then it's kind of fuzzy now, but I think I just rested for a while. Nothing really happened. They were just monitoring my contractions. They checked me at like noon and I was, um, nine and a half. I remember the doctor came in, checked me. I was nine and a half centimeters dilated. And I was like, okay, I'm like ready to go. Like I can, like, can I like start pushing in like 10 minutes? <laughs> no. Although I could have probably started pushing pretty soon after that, but my doctor is so busy. Like I said before, she didn't come back till 3 PM. I didn't start pushing till three. So I waited like all of that time when I could have been probably ready to go at like one because she she had to check me um, again. So that was kind of frustrating because I just, I was just waiting for so long and I knew I was nine and a half and I was like, I'm probably ready. Like, where's the doctor? Um, and yeah, she wasn't around that much. So 
Um, after that, so I started pushing at 3 p.m. on May 2nd, and um, nothing was happening. Um, the nurse that came in, so it was a different nurse than the night nurse, the, nur the new nurse came in at 7. There was already a weird vibe when she walked in. She was like frustrated. She was like panicking. She seemed like super stressed out. Like she didn't seem like calm and like the vibe was off. And she was like kind of older, um, probably like 40s or 50s. The, my, the nurse before was probably like in her 20s. Anyway, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying there's like a different style, I think, of like new nurses versus old nurses and like how they practice labor and delivery stuff. But anyway, I started pushing at three. She, she did like the old school, like hold for 10 seconds, push, then relax. And that's what I did. I did that for like two and a half hours and then, or maybe like two hours. And then my husband was like, okay, maybe we could try something else because it's not working. Um, so the baby was like just stuck in the birth canal and I was getting really frustrated um, because like the method wasn't working. I wasn't like pushing right. Um, she wasn't like super helpful. She was kind of like negative and she was just like, oh, you're not doing it right. Um, I was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, I don't know how to push like with an epidural. I can't feel anything. So yeah, that was pretty tough. And um, she told me after like two, oh wait, no. My husband was like, okay, let's try a different like breathing technique. Let's do like seven seconds, then push. And then um, we tried like five seconds and then we tried like push, 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 break, push, 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 break. Um, didn't really work. I was, um, remember that I haven't had any sleep. So this is like five-ish PM the next day on no sleep. Um, so I'm exhausted. I They put like the oxygen mask on me to just kind of help me wake up a little because I was like literally falling asleep during labor, during the pushing. Um, and I like, I don't think I could, I could do it. I said to my husband, like, I can't do this. This was my lowest point um, in all of labor. I said, I can't do this. Like I started crying. I was like, the baby was just like stuck. And she was like, okay, take a break. And I could like kind of feel him down there, his head. And I was just like, okay, I want a C-section. Like I can't do this. Um, I was like, I'm not doing it right. Um, baby's not coming out. Like, I don't know what to do. This is like painful because I could, I could feel him. The epidural was like wearing off after like three hours. So and more than three hours, they refilled my epidural um, because I was like, I can kind of feel uh, stuff down there. So that's what happened. And then what happened after that? Then, oh yeah. Then this, um, my OB came in and she was helping a little bit. She was like, okay, push, push, push. And I was trying to push, nothing was really happening. And then she was like, okay, I have to go because I have to go pick up my kids. Okay, bye. She didn't really help. Um, and then I was like, okay, like nothing's happening. What do we do here? My husband was like, where's like the doctor? Because the baby's like stuck and it's been like three and a half hours and um, we need a doctor in here. Like, like this is, this isn't good, um, let's try and like figure out what to do. So then the other doctor, um, I don't remember her name, but um, uh, she came in like 15 minutes later and that was the longest 15 minutes of my life. 
it was like brutal just like waiting for the doctor and just like having him stuck down there and um yeah just not really knowing what to do or what to expect or what was gonna happen so um then she came in she brought a whole team with her like there was four other nurses with her i think they were kind of informed about what was going on because they had like everything they brought like a bunch of like medical tools and everything um i think they were going to try and use the vacuum but then she like looked down there she was like oh the baby's head is like right there she's like you just need to push a little bit more and so like her whole team came surrounded like my bed and they were like yelling screaming push 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 like you can do it and so i like i gave it like all of my the rest of my energy that i didn't really have i gave like as much energy as i could pushed and she kind of like pulled him out of me and it was pretty painful and i like wish that didn't happen but it happened and my husband even it was even like she like pulled the baby out of you i was like i know like that was i could like feel that kind of and anyway um that's what had to happen i guess um she didn't use a vacuum or any forceps or anything it was just me pushing and then she kind of like pulled him out and he was fine like the whole time his heartbeat was okay um everything was fine with him and then I had like a second degree tear and they stitched me and um yeah that was not fun I was not expecting the postpartum to be that difficult um but it was really really amazing when they put him on my chest because it was like I think I was happier that like the labor part was over than I was like joyful about the baby being here, although I was very happy that he was there. Um, but I was happy that it was over. Um, and he had like a cone head because just like, I think cause he was stuck in there. Um, and he weighed eight pounds, 12 ounces. So he was pretty big and he was, this was like 39 weeks pregnant. So yeah, he was pretty big. Um, and then they let me rest a little. Um, I don't even, I don't remember what happened after that. All I remember was after like two hours, they let me rest. It's, I, it's literally like blackout after that. Um, but I do remember switching rooms. So they, they took me from the delivery room to like the postpartum room and the postpartum room was small and tiny and like not as nice as the other room, but whatever. Um, and then, then the epidural kind of wore off and that's when like the pain of everything came and I still haven't had any sleep. So I think immediately, like when I got into that room, I um, fell asleep and I think I slept for like two hours and then, and then another nurse work, woke me up or my baby woke me up. I'm not really sure. Um, I can't remember, but it's really hard because you're dealing with all of that pain and then you're trying to like take care of a baby and then I was like trying to sleep because I hadn't slept and then you can't really sleep with the baby and you also can't really sleep with nurses knocking on the door every single hour saying oh we have to do this we have to check your blood pressure or you need to take your pain medication or it's like why can't you just do it like at once and then let me sleep for like three hours instead of like one hour not even and yeah that was really frustrating because they would come in all the time and just wake you up and this has to do with like hospitals and money because every time they come in it's like the hospital makes more money so that's why they do it so much um so i officially hate hospitals um never want to go back 
Um, I think that was like a terrible experience for me. I don't think that most women have that kind of experience. Although I know some women do, some women have it even worse. So, um, yeah. Um, then we had to stay another day. They had to check me. They did like the, the massage where they push on your belly and that wasn't, that was not fun. Um, and then I was taking pain medication the whole time, but like I was still in so much pain. I could barely walk. I felt like I'd been hit by a truck or something. Like I could barely walk to go to the bathroom. And luckily I had family come the next day. They brought us food. They brought us like coffee. Um, they brought gifts for the baby. And it was just nice to like see my family and my husband's family. So, um, yeah, that part I enjoyed, but I just didn't enjoy like the hospital experience whatsoever. Um, so I don't think I'll go back to a hospital, but that's just me. That's just my experience. Um, baby is healthy. He's doing really well. He's eight months and I'm happy that I get to share this. I think it's good to share your story. Even if you had a, especially if you had a really positive birth story, you should share that. And then I think that it's just as important for women to share their birth experience if it was like more on the negative side, because there has to be that balance. And I hope that if you're pregnant, that you have a really positive birth experience, even if it's hospital, even if it's home birth, even if it's birthing center, whatever. I just pray that you have a positive experience however you choose to birth your baby. And thank you for listening. Bye.